Dear colleagues, we live in an era of glass. Look around you, we are surrounded by glass. Glass is essential to fulfill our projects for the Agenda 2030, for a circular economy, for the development of a sustainable economy. In June 2019, a very old friend, Alicia Duran, a scientist in the Spanish Council of Scientists, came up with this idea on how to promote an international year of glass. We sit and we develop what you are going to see now, the basic concepts of this video. What you have in front of you is a program for making 2022 the International Year of Glass, a program which is based on more than 1,100 support declarations from coming from more than 74 countries in every single continent. You will see what will be the impact of this year in every single country. And you will see also how the program has been organized through hundreds of events in every country, in every continent, to try to support and to explain to everybody the importance of class in our society and in our economies. I want to thank you, all the ambassadors that are with us in this initiative. I want to thank you, especially the President of the General Assembly, Mr. Volkan Boskir, for his support to this idea. Please see the video and please help us in approving a resolution that would make possible in 2022 the year of class. Thank you very much. Turkey is pleased to be part of this initiative to promote the importance of class, which is a great potential to underpin sustainable and inclusive development. I would like to thank the International Commission on Glass, the Community of Glass Associations and the Glass Art Society for their leadership. The significance of glass has become more visible in the last decades. Today, glass-based products are used in medicine, agriculture, construction, energy generation and even in our quest to explore the universe. In all its applications, glass enhances people's lives and our environment and help us implement the UN Sustainable Development Agenda. Glass is as old as our civilization, dating back to 3000 BC in Mesopotamia. In Turkey, the modern glass industry has grown immensely since it was established in the 1930s using 100% domestic raw materials. We are proud that Turkey is now one of the top global producers of glass with its production capacity, high quality and experience. I hope that this initiative will increase awareness of glass all over the world while shaping the future with its wide range of products to improve the lives of millions of people. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am Mohammed Idris, fellow representative of Egypt to the United Nations in New York. I am pleased to welcome the initiative to celebrate the year 2022 as the International Year of Glass. I commend the work of the steering committee and express our support for their efforts to bring people from around the world to this celebration. The art of glass forming has been known since the ancient Egyptian civilization as far back as more than 3,000 years ago. In all the present gadgets, the future glass technology can be seen we must use it judiciously for the sustainable development of our global village. There will be lots of endeavors needed to fulfill the future innovations of glass, making the lives of people more comfortable, creative, colorful, and enjoyable. Thank you very much. We often take glass for granted, perhaps because we usually look through it rather than at it. Glass has enabled the development of contemporary civilization. It brings light into homes while keeping the weather out. We see it in art, where glass has long been thought of as aesthetically pleasing due to the way it can be colored 
and how its translucency catches the eye. Its resistance to corrosion means that stained glass windows have adorned churches for centuries. Eye glasses have corrected deteriorating sight since the 13th century. But today, more than a billion people around the world have untreated vision problems, costing the global economy 200 billion annually due to lost productivity. All this could be remedied by initiatives supplying low-cost glasses. Glass is such a central part of our everyday lives, and we often don't even notice it. It's a high-tech transparent material that is protective, scratch-resistant, and tough, all while adding function. It can bend light in our microscopes and telescopes, teaching us how the universe and life has evolved. We are celebrating 30 years of the Hubble telescope. Without it and its enormous glass mirrors, we wouldn't have seen the beginnings of time and the formation of the universe. Now, thanks to glass, large Earth-based telescopes can see just as far. The 2020 Nobel Prize for Physics was awarded for the discovery of a black hole at the center of our galaxy. Reinhard Genzel and Andrea Gaz discovered this by tracking the movement of over 4 million solar masses, all packed together in a region of space that is no larger than our solar system. This was only possible using Hubble's giant glass mirrors that enable the collection of light over incredibly long distances. 2021 sees the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. It will be 100 times more powerful than the Hubble and be able to peer back in time over 13.5 billion years to see the first galaxies born after the Big Bang. Glass now harvests energy connects us through high-speed fibers, the hidden ultra-structure of the internet, and delivers unique medical treatments. All of this while being one of the most recyclable materials. We are now in the glass age. So what is glass and what makes it so amazing? Let's start with a trip to the beach. It all starts with this, a grain of sand. Clean quartz sand, the most abundant raw material on Earth, is melted at temperatures hotter than the hottest lava. It is then cooled quickly, with some additives to help lower melting points, reducing the energy needed to melt. These additives also add important properties, from color, to strength. What makes glass so useful is the random arrangement of its silica units. This lets us play with its structure and put other active elements in it. Those additives are also found near the beach, in cliffs, or in lake beds. An important additive is actually glass itself. Glass is 100% recyclable adding value to itself by making production cheaper. Glass is the only material that can be infinitely recycled. In Europe, 74% of it is already, while CO2 emissions in glass making have been reduced by 70% and energy requirements by 80% over the last 40 years. Glass can also help reduce energy waste and generate renewable energy. Green glass can even be upcycled to hydrophobic glass particles, which replace sand in water treatment. These particles can then remove unwanted heavy metals, organic matter, and microplastics from water. 
glass has been used to preserve food and beverages for centuries and is becoming more popular again due to the impact of plastic waste on landfill and our oceans. Glass is also the only widely used packaging material classified as generally recognized as safe by regulatory bodies. Common home insulation is made up of fine glass fibers that trap air, reducing heat flow in and out of our homes. Insulation can be improved even further by Aerogel, a glass that is the world's best insulator. It is also the world's lightest 3D material, being 99.9% .9 air. Aerogel was developed by NASA to capture meteorites and bring them safely back to Earth for examination. The space dust crashes into the sponge-like glass, getting lodged inside the structure. The aerogel's insulating properties protect the meteorites as the probe re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, leaving the meteorites undamaged, ready for analysis. Aerogel is also used in spacesuits, innovative clothing, and insulation for modern buildings, with engineers bringing manufacturing costs down. Speaking of modern buildings, glass is now fashionable. Thanks to the float glass manufacturing process, we can now make large flat sheets of glass, which are great for maximizing daylight, boosting well-being, and reducing the need for artificial light. But the glass also takes an important role in the ecosystem of vertical cities. Glass has always been able to filter much of harmful UV radiation. Now, modern glass also reduces the greenhouse effect for buildings by reflecting infrared light and regulating visible light transmission and can be embedded with photovoltaic solar cells that harvest energy from the sun. You might think cleaning the windows of the world's tallest buildings would never end, but self-cleaning technology, glass coatings that break down dirt, keeps them clean. Special coatings on the windows interact with sunlight to actively break down dirt through a process called photocatalysis. It's true that tall buildings can be a danger to birds, but glass can help here too. Birds see UV light, so a patterned UV reflecting coating makes glass visible to birds while remaining transparent to human eyes. Solar power is no longer limited to low power cells. Solar thermal energy harvesting uses fields of glass mirrors to focus light and heat onto a central tower. The tower contains salts that store this energy and allow the continual release of steam. This can then drive turbines and produce electricity even after the sun has stopped shining. As it's 100% recyclable, Glass keeps packaging out of landfill and reduces the need for new raw materials. Travel is now safer thanks to innovations in glass. Car windshields no longer shatter upon impact. Glass fibers give high strength to tough composites, from tennis rackets to wind turbine blades and lightweight aeroplane fuselages. There is also a vast network of glass fibers that connect the world, enabling reliable, rapid communication and transfer of data, bringing us the World Wide Web. The internet allows instant transfer of information globally, from video streaming to the delivery of life-saving surgery from the other side of the world. Glass fiber communications 
have enabled us to communicate and carry on while in lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This experience has changed the way we work and is reducing travel, emissions, and fostering smaller carbon footprints. Our phones now provide global communication and bring media instantly to isolated populations across the world. Thanks to glass, screens are now scratch resistant and even waterproof. Glass is the key to the delivery of 5G. The power of the radio signal is provided by a tight network of transmitters connected by high-speed optical fibers. Communications technology is playing an increasing role in the education of students, enabling information to reach far from existing institutions. This enables not only distance learning, but also communication for consumers and tradespeople in remote locations, keeping them in touch with the wider economy. Glass is a key material in healthcare, as it is one of the most inert materials in the world. It is used to carry and store sensitive drugs that could otherwise react with the vial they are kept in. Life-saving EpiPens have to be administered within minutes for patients suffering severe allergic shock. Glass cartridges are needed to store the medicine in the pen, but conventional glass would break in one out of ten applications due to the aggressive nature of the injection. The success of the EpiPen is due to chemically strengthened speciality glass. Chances of failure are now one in a million. The optical fibers used to drive the internet are also used in endoscopes for minimally invasive diagnosis or surgical procedures. In medicine, there is also a special type of glass that dissolves in the body, forming a bond with bone and actively stimulating healing. It is called bioglass and it has even been shown to combat deep bone infections. 2021 is the 50th anniversary of the paper that announced Bioglass to the world. It has helped more than 2 million patients heal bones that would not have healed on their own and is now used in toothpaste that can repair teeth. Biodegradable glass scaffolds work like scaffolds for buildings. They provide platforms for the builders to walk onto to lay down bricks. In this case, the cells are the builders laying down the building blocks of bone. The scaffold is then removed by the body as the bone grows. Similar glass is used to make devices that resemble cotton, which can heal wounds such as diabetic food ulcers that have not healed under conventional treatment. The glass biodegrades quickly and within weeks, the wound is healed. Finally, glass can also be used to produce surfaces that are not only easy to clean, but also actively kill bacteria that threaten to colonize our hospitals and care homes. As microbial resistance to antibiotics increases, this technology is becoming ever more relevant to saving lives. We are finding new applications for glass all the time. This is because adding small amounts of new elements can radically change its function from optical and thermal properties to bioactivity. Almost every element in the periodic table can give glass a new feature. 
Window glass is strengthened by small amounts of aluminium and magnesium. By adding boron, glass can become resistant to thermal shock. Glass is colored by elements, such as chromium for green and cobalt for blue. Silver or copper can create glass that kills bacteria. Mixing in rare earth elements such as neodymium, erbium, or cerium can create glass that gives lasers their power. And adding strontium to bioglass may help heal bone fractures in patients with osteoporosis. These are just a selection of the diverse ways glass has and continues to contribute to international development. Glass's unique structure is allowing itself to be thinner, stronger, more flexible, and more functional while using raw materials and processes that are sustainable for our planet. Glass is improving the world's quality of life while providing a carbon neutral, zero waste material cycle. Welcome to the age of glass. Hello, I'm Alicia Duran, Research Professor of CSIC, the Spanish Research Council, and President of the International Commission on Glass. After watching this wonderful video, I wish to tell you the story of the International Year of Glass. In 2014, Corning introduced the concept of the arrival of the Glass Age, and one year later, the United Nations declared the International Year of Light and Light-Based Technologies. So the idea of Glass Age is spread in many articles and presentations. In 2018, and at the request of David Pye, the idea was presented in the annual congress of the ICG by the President Manos Chudari. And the answer of ICG was this, the International Commission on Glass, representing organizations and individuals throughout the world dedicated to the promotion of science, technology, artistry, and application of glass, enthusiastically endorsed the exploration of a future declaration of a year of glass by the United Nations. Well, uh, all the national uh, associations uh, linked to ICG endorse uh, this exploration, and the idea is also included in the winter school of ICG in Wuhan, uh, with uh, uh, 
taking wonderful ideas from the students and the professors. And the, so the ICG accept the challenge of getting the International Year of Class 2022. Well, we began uh, contacting and taking advice from the uh, previous years of crystallography, light uh, periodic table, and the <clears throat> I had an interview with the Spanish ambassador at the United Nations that accepted to lead the project in United Nations. Uh, we also gathered the support of the uh, Science and Innovation uh, Ministry and uh, of uh, CSIC, the Spanish Research Council, and uh, my home. Uh, in uh, July 2019, uh, the community of Glass Association support the, and endorse uh, the initiative, and also the ICOM Glass acts uh, as endorser of uh, this uh, year of Glass. We have uh, also uh, arrived at an agreement of mutual collaboration with uh, UNESCO and the International Year of Basic Science of Sustainable uh, Development. Which are the goals uh, of this year? Uh, our vision uh, of uh, this International Year is to celebrate the past present and future of GLASS, following the goals of the Agenda 2030. We need to demonstrate the role of GLASS throughout the recorded history in advancing civilization, stimulate the research of GLASS among organizations, in education, industry, research, and the public domain, including museums, addressing the, uh, uh, the, the challenge of the world uh, and achieving sustainable and equitable growth, improving the quality of life everywhere. We uh, need uh, to build uh, worldwide alliances focused on science and engineering for young people and uh, addressing the gender balance and the needs of development of uh, emerging countries. Well, uh, we organize uh, an endorsement campaign with a very high participation, and uh, today we have more than 1,100 endorsements from 72 countries. We have uh, just confirmed big international events, the opening conference in Geneva, the International High Tech Industry Congress in Shanghai, uh, coincident with the glass exhibition, the worldwide glass exhibition, at the International Congress of ICG in Berlin, where they will celebrate the 100th anniversary of DGG, an International Glass Art Museum Congress, and the, the con <coughs> closing Congress in Japan in December. But uh, much more. Uh, use Day, Glass Day in Washington, a conference from pharaohs to high-level uh, tech glass in, in, in Egypt, and many other activities. But uh, we have to work uh, very hard, but there are many people uh, really behind this idea. And uh, the first one, David Pye, that uh, was uh, dean of uh, Alfred University and president of the International uh, Commission on Glass, was uh, really the former two behind the idea. John Parker from the University of uh, Sheffield, that uh, really is uh, the heart and the soul of uh, the ICG and also of this uh, project. John Morrow from uh, uh, Penn State and Manoj Chudari uh, from uh, uh, Corning that uh, were spreading the idea of the age uh, of glass. Well, our friends uh, Santo Canela and Justi from the community of glass uh, associations our young guys, uh, Julian Jones from the Imperial College and Mathieu Hubert from Corning, that were behind this wonderful video that uh, you have uh, seen. And uh, we have uh, in, at national level uh, our ex-president Peng Xu uh, from uh, China and uh, Seth Sutanabe from the Kyoto University because the <clears throat> they arrive to the uh, uh, amount of uh, 400, more than 400 endorsements for the countries. Here we have uh, uh, really the uh, support of uh, uh, Miguel Campos, president of the Spanish uh, Society, and uh, uh, Juan Martin Cano, general Secret secretary of the associations that gather all the manufacturers of in, in, in Spain. Patrick Gavana from Australia and Nora Pellegri from Argentina working together from the Antipodes. Dusan Galusek, director of Fanglas, and Thomas Yangli, director of uh, DGG in Germany. 
and the Professor Murali Haran and the Binit Kapoor, the academia and the industry of glass uh, working together in India. Rauf El Malawani, that uh, gathered a lot of endorsement from Egypt and uh, Africa. Ilkay Sokman and Ardich Gilmas, our contacts in uh, Sisejam and uh, Turkey. And uh, here, three special persons. Teresa Medici from Icon Glass, Steve Gibbs uh, from the Mus Cornell Museum of Glass, and uh, Maria Eugenia Diaz de Vivar, a glass artist, uh, that uh, from uh, Rome, uh, Corning and uh, Buenos Aires, they gather really more than 220 support from the art uh, and museum fields. And here they are uh, the nine last presidents of the ICG from 1994, more than 25 years of experience. Here there is uh, the power uh, behind uh, and the experience that uh, permitted us uh, to organize uh, this uh, and uh, this is glass, a single word embracing a world of possibilities, a single word to design the future. Hundreds and hundreds of excited, wishful people and institutions coming from all the corners of the planet support this project. I invite you all to join us and share this wonderful adventure.